Look at this dude. Whoosh, popping everybody. Welcome back to another video. Hey man, if you haven't already done so, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Smash the like button. Leave a comment down below. Click that bell while you're at it so you can be a part of the post. Know the gang family. Best family on YouTube. And that's no cat hands down. <laughs> hey man, look, we are here for Bruce 2 Films. 90s TV. Figure it out. We're gonna do less talking, more reacting. Let's dive right into this video. Let's go. All right, now for those of you that don't know, I'm doing a little sub-series on 90s TV shows. And the okay. last time I touched on a Nickelodeon classic, Double Dare. Well, this time around, I wanna talk about another Nickelodeon game show, and that would be the one called Figure It Out. I don't, now, I I don't remember that one. I was Figure It Out when I was a kid, partly because it was a pretty simple concept. You had a child contestant that had some sort of secret hidden talent, and okay. then you had a panel of Nickelodeon pseudo-celebrities that had to guess what it was. You know, they had to figure it out. Oh. Now, I see what they did, okay. Now this panel had three rounds to ask yes or no questions to the kid, and each round that they didn't figure it out, the kid won a prize. The first round would be like a pair of rollerblades, Second round was either a mountain bike or a Nintendo 64. And the third round was always a vacation of some sort. Pretty standard format. Except I gotta say that the- Man, this looks all old as hell, man. Vacations that they picked on Figured Out fucking sucked ass. It was always like some arbitrary place like Corpus Christi, Texas, or fucking Mount Pelier, Vermont. Ah, fuck yeah, Vermont. I love maple syrup and crusty ass old people. Hell yeah. Now at the beginning of the show, no. they would disclose to those watching at home what this kid's little hidden talent was. And I have to say, it was a pretty wide spectrum when it came to these so-called talents on Figure It Out. I mean, sure, sometimes you'd have like a- This seemed like a lame ass show. I ain't gonna cat. Really smart kid that would be like, I invented bifocals in the second grade. And you'd be sitting there at home like, God damn, bifocals? I thought that was Ben Frank. Franklin's ass. That's pretty damn impressive. But then most of the time, they'd be scraping the bottom of the barrel for talent, and they'd just throw some dirty little kid up there like, uh, sometimes I have my dog drink milk from the inside of my mouth. Ah, uh, what the f White people sh bro. Fuck, how the hell is that a talent? What is this fucking- Oh fat? my god. Like he's gonna get gingivitis for Christ's sake. And yeah, before you ask, I'm not exaggerating. That was indeed a real talent on a real episode of Figure It Out. Really? Holy shit, when I was nine years old for Christ's sake. A little girl letting a dog lick milk out of her fucking mouth. And that memory's been with me ever since. Why, why, why? So well, now the memory is gonna be stuck with me. Thanks, Bruce Stu. Let's go ahead and do a little hypothetical episode of Figure It Out, if you will. Just okay. to let you guys know how this show played out. All right. First of all, the show starts with the host, Summer Sanders. And side note, while I was recording this, I kept saying Suzanne Summer instead of Summer Sanders. You know, the chick from fucking Three's Company. For whatever reason, my brain can't differentiate between the two people. They're the same fucking person to me. So if I confuse the two during this cartoon, well, you're just gonna have to deal with it because I'm sick of recording this goddamn thing. So anyway, Suzanne Summers introduces- <laughs> That's the one thing about Bruce. Like, he's so blunt and honest. It's, like, hilarious. First contestant, <laughs> Little Ricky. And Little Ricky would either have a mullet or a bowl-cut hairdo. It wasn't required to be on the show, but, uh, well, it sure seemed like it was recommended. And let's just say that Little Ricky's talent is that he's the, uh, fucking hula hoop champion of Wisconsin. Okay. That sounds about right. That's smack dab in the spectrum there. I don't know what the fuck a hula hoop champion is, but it might be impressive. So okay. first things first, they break down his talent into a few words, and they plaster him on this giant head that they call Billy or Buddy or fucking Bucky the answer head, whatever the hell it was, but yeah. they hide all the main words from the panel, of course. <laughs> and now it's the panel's job to ask yes or no questions in order to figure out what the fuck Little Ricky's all about. And on this panel, you'd have like Mike O'Malley from Nickelodeon Guts, Josh Servers, obnoxious ass from all that, my boy Danny Tamborelli from Pete and Pete, and my personal favorite, Lori Beth motherfucking Denver. This is definitely way back, uh, way before my time. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a 90s baby. I don't know if Bruce Stu is a 90s baby. He might be an 80s baby at this point. I don't know. Cause I don't, I don't know. None Denver of this. was my favorite panelist because she was the only one that took the game seriously. The other people would just joke around and ask the kids stupid questions like, uh, does your talent have anything to do with porcupines? Uh, no, what the fuck? But not Lori Beth Denberg's ass. No, her ass was trying to figure it out. Fuck these kids and their hopes and dreams. She's gonna ask some tough ass questions and get some answers. Tell me, child, are either of your parents ashamed of your talent? Uh, I don't know. Judges, what do you think? They're saying yes, absolutely. Specifically the dad. <laughs> Interesting. Is it perhaps because you're a champion of a not so masculine activity? <laughs> Holy shit, she's good. Uh, you know, Lori Beth, it's still the first round. Why don't you take it easy on the kid? Oh, I'm sorry, Suzanne Summers. I thought we were supposed to fucking figure it out. Are we not supposed to figure it out? What the fuck is this? Now, it's important to note that every round, the panelists would be given a clue of some sort. I mean I'm about to look this show up to see what this is all about, bro. 
The blank champion of blank sure as hell ain't much to go off of. Are you the world champion of porcupines? No, Josh, he's not. What the fuck is up with you and porcupines? Now, these clues that they would get would vary from episode to episode. Sometimes they'd have the panelists feel an object while they're blindfolded, or sometimes people would just yell shit at them from the audience. Hey, you stupid asses! It's a state that nobody gives a shit about! Uh, Wisconsin? <laughs> Hell, sometimes they just bring out the uh, charade brigade, which was when two assholes would march out on stage and try to mime a clue for them. Uh, dancing? Uh, dancing like an asshole. How many chances do they get to guess it, though? Like, in, in each round? Dirty dancing. Fucking uh, dirty dancing champion of Wisconsin. Mm. Oh, God damn it. And then the charade brigade would just trot off stage, and usually the panelists were even more confused than they were to begin with. Now, the best part about Figure It Out was, of course, the slime. I mean, it's a Nickelodeon show, for Christ's sake. Somebody's got to get covered Oh, I in remember shit. that. It's what puts the asses in the seats, if you will. And the slime would happen in the second round with something they would call the secret slime action. The now, secret slime action. the panelists obviously action. had no idea what the secret slime action was. They would just flash it on screen for everybody watching at home. The secret slime action is trying to hide a fart by coughing into your hand. So now you'd be sitting at home all amped up, just waiting for one of the panelists to fuck up and get slimed six ways to Sunday. Uh, does your talent involve... <clears throat> Oh, looks like you did the secret slime action, Danny Tamborelli. How dare you try to fart in front of a live studio audience, you fucking piece of shit. Damn. I swear, it seemed like it was always Danny Tamborelli's ass getting slimed. Like they would target his ass specifically with the secret slime action. The secret slime action is being a red-headed, freckled fuck. Damn. Oh, snap, Danny. Looks like we got you again. What the hell did I do this time? Does Nickelodeon still do that? The, the whole slime thingy? Well, it's not what you did, Danny. It's what you are. It's not our fault you're a They do it at the, the Kids' now, Choice Awards, right? rounds of all this happy horse shit, it would come down to the panel's final guess. Little Ricky would be getting all excited. That vacation to Butte, Montana's practically in pissing distance now. But not so fast, because you'd still have Lori Beth Denberg's ass over there smoking a cigarette. You know damn well she had this kid still in her crosshairs. During well, a live well, audience? It's been a fine episode, but I think you and I both know that you're the fucking hula hoop champion of Wisconsin. Oh, damn. <laughs> Snap, Lori Beth Denberg coming in clutch. Well, I guess coming in clutch. Little Ricky, no vacation for your ass. Jay, tell him all the prizes that he won. Well, he's won the pair of rollerblades and the Nintendo 60 mountain bike, but he just fell short of the what? trip to Butte, Montana. And then lo and behold, it's the end of the show. And of course, little Ricky gets to demonstrate his mediocre, semi-impressive talent for everybody. But they'd always be running out of time, be like the last six seconds. Figured out better than an episode of Double Dare? Well, fucking hell no. Double Dare had a goddamn obstacle course at the end of the show. You can't compete with an obstacle course. Somebody's mom slipping a disc because she fucking... I'm glad I was it. No way. Regardless, Figured Out was one of my favorite shows. And I think for my next episode of this little sub-series, I'm either going to do Supermarket Sweep or maybe another Nickelodeon classic. Legends of the Hidden Temple. Leave your votes down in the comments or don't because I'm not your dad and I can't tell you what to do. And let's be honest, I'm not going to tally them up anyway, so what's the fucking point? The end. I'm glad I didn't grow up on those shows, man. That just look that just looks like some depressing shows for real. I ain't gonna lie. Like those look like some lame ass shows. I would never watch them, bro. No cap. But hey man, if y'all made it to the end, I do greatly, greatly appreciate it, man. Smash the like button, leave a comment down below, click that bell while you're at it. Until next time, I'm gonna see y'all next time. I'm out.